Welcome to Daily Living with Father Chapin, where we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Yes, my friend, that is what we do. Sometimes the Bible can be a bit confusing, so we bust it down like a fraction. We're asking questions along the way. Questions like, what do these Gospels have to do with me? That's what I want to know. How can I take these Gospels and apply them into my daily living so that I can become, well, a reflection of God's love to a world that does not know God and is definitely in need of more love, don't you think? I mean, take a look around, my friend. There's a lot of bad news bears out there. How can we take the good news of Jesus Christ and apply it into our daily living? so that we can become, well, light in this present darkness. I want to be a tool in the hand of God, making present His kingdom. Not someday, but today and every day, and that's what this show is all about. And I'm so glad you could join us. Got a good one for you today, but before we get into it, it is time for Viewer Mail. Our first Letter coming from Kathleen. She is living in Appleton, Wisconsin. Advice from a pumpkin. Be well-rounded. Get plenty of sunshine. Give thanks for life's bounty. Have a thick skin. Keep growing. Be outstanding in your field. And think big. Kathleen, I love it. I love it. Also coming in the mail, you know, I, I, I get a lot of mail um, for Stormy. Stormy is the star of daily living, and I get a lot of mail, and I got this, I got this cat toy for Stormy. Open it up. Oh, yes. I, I know this cat toy. You, you put the little pallets in there and you, whoop. Stormy, she really, really like. Well, now, what, what does this have to do? Nothing. What do you say with quieter minds? Well, but, but before we do that, I, there is one thing I did want to mention. Did you know, you, have you ever heard of Alexa? Yeah, she's very popular. You can say to any Alexa device, you can say, hey, Alexa. Play the podcast, Daily Living with Father Chapin. Now, you have to say it just that way. You can't say, hey, Alexa, play Father Chapin, because she won't listen to you, okay? She's very specific. You have to say, Alexa, play the podcast, Daily Living with Father Chapin. And it plays. And the thing is, it, it, it doesn't really play it in an order. It, it will play the last show, but then it jumps all over the place. And it'll play a show from like two years ago. It will play the show that you need to hear, which is weird, but that's how the spirit works. Meets you where you're at in life. Anyway, I just throw that out there because maybe you don't have an Alexa device. Or maybe you can buy one for your mother or your, your, your grandfather who watches Daily Living and, and teach them how to do it. Because let me tell you, my friends, this face was built for radio, okay? So I look great on an Alexa device or an Alexa device. What do you say? We quiet our minds and put ourselves in the presence of God. You know, we spend so much time running here, running there, doing this, doing that. How often do we just stop and say, what am I doing? Where am I going? You know, the good news about the good news is that God wants to lead you. And he does it through the quiet voice, which is something we're going to be talking about today. Now, this quiet voice is kind of like those GPS systems in cars. You ever, you ever heard these things where the lady says, you know, take a right in 100 yards. You know that lady? Well, sometimes you take a left. And, and the thing about those GPS systems is they will reroute you to where you went wrong and get you to your final destination. My friends, sometimes we take a left in life and the Spirit will reroute us to our destination, which, by the way, in case you're wondering, is the will 
of your father. But the thing about this spirit, this quiet voice, is it's quiet. And it will not raise itself up to compete with the cacophony of screaming voices of this world that say, you know, go here, do this, buy this, you know, wear this, take a picture, send it to your friend, you know, the noise of the world. God speaks in the silence. The language of God is silence, which is unfortunate because this world is full of noise. It, you know, it's almost like that there is a power that wants you to get lost and distracted in the noise so that you can't hear the voice because guess what? There is. And one very powerful way to hear his voice is through his word, which is what we're going to do right now. What do you say? We open up our minds, our ears to hear the message. We're going to school, my friend. Are you ready to be the student? We are hearing from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to him in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you. Among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Wow. My friends, and what a gospel it is. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin calling the kids. It's going to be good. We'll be right back, and we're going to talk about this gospel and a few other things here as we consider God's Word and how it is that we can apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. It is such a pleasure to be able to come into your home each and every week and share the good news, but it's a bit expensive. So I would ask you to consider grabbing a piece of paper and a pencil, and at the next break, I'm gonna share with you some details how you can become a partner with Daily Living. And together, we can take the good news to a lost world. What do you say we get back to the show? Welcome back to Daily Living. Today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Advent. And Christmas is just around the corner, ho, ho, ho. A very special time in the Christian calendar, a very holy time that has been hijacked by a large man in a red suit. And I understand that Gary from Racine, Wisconsin, doesn't like it when I give Santa a hard time, but it must be said. When it comes to the reason for the season, our world has lost its way in a carnival of glitter and mistletoe. But this is what we do. Now, like we were talking about last week, Advent's really got two things going on at the same time. Number one, we are preparing for the baby Jesus in the manger. You know, swaddling clothes, star of Bethlehem, shepherds, wise men, smiling animals. But number two, we're also living in the expectation of the arrival of the kingdom of God, also known as the second coming, the apocalypse, the eschaton. This is when Jesus will return to carry out the justice and mercy that we all long for. So there is an underlying apocalyptic feel to Advent, living in the expectation of what is eternal, which is certainly where John the Baptist lived. Today we find him in prison. 
Jesus has already come. But for reasons that are beyond me, John the Baptist does not become one of his disciples. Even though the first disciple of Jesus was Andrew, who was a disciple of John the Baptist, and even though when Jesus came walking over the hill, it was John that clearly said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. For whatever reason, he does not become part of the Jesus entourage. Rather, he says, I must decrease and so that he may increase. And he bows out. Now, of course, at the time, John the Baptist had quite a following of his own. We know that all of Jerusalem, Judea, and the surrounding countryside had come out to see him to be baptized in the River Jordan. But as time went on, maybe this was a miscalculation, maybe not, but for whatever reason, John the Baptist spoke truth to power. And I know from personal experience that this often does not work out well. And such was the case for John the Baptist. So here's the situation. King Herod lusted over his brother's wife Herodias. And in time there was a divorce and then King Herod married the wife of his brother, which breaks all kinds of of Mosaic law and John the Baptist decided to call him out on the carpet publicly. In other words, he bit the bear and the bear bit back. John was arrested, thrown into a dungeon because he's a king and kings have dungeons. When John the Baptist heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question. Are you the one who is to come? Or should we look for another? Doubt. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about doubt. Is doubt a bad thing? Because my friends, when Jesus came to this world, he defeated many things, all manner of disease, demonic possession. He defeated hunger when he fed 5,000. He defeated death when he raised Lazarus. He defeated every probing question he was ever asked. He even defeated Mother Nature, remember the storm at sea. But you know, the one thing that he could never defeat, the one foe that he just couldn't seem to vanquish, doubt. Couldn't defeat doubt. So let's talk about doubt. Where does doubt come from? Well, it seems to me that the genesis of doubt pops up whenever anything goes against the norm. You know, when things are out of the ordinary, when things are different. Why? Because, you know, Father, this is the way we've always done it. It's just woven into the fabric of our own DNA. It is part of our human nature. But you know another thing that is part of human nature? The deep desire to be a part of something else, to be part of a group. We are not wandering nomads. God built us for a relationship. And because of this, we have an instinctual deep desire to flock together. And we tend to kind of hang out with people like ourselves. People of our own ethnicity, people of our own political views, people of our own socioeconomic status. And why? What, where does this need come from to congregate? Because in doing so, we feel safe, right? This is the very definition of society. The need to clan together and feel safe. This is our world. Now, in our world, there are two kinds of people. One group, which is a great majority, about 85% or so, look at the world, look at societal norms, whatever those rules might be, whatever customs they might be. And they see that other people have found safety and success within those norms, and they say, okay, I'm all in. I, I, I will do what they do. I will think what they think. I will believe what they believe, because now I'm part of the group. This is what we do. Now let's call them sheep. Now there's a second group of people only about 15%. And 
and they look at the world, they look at societal norms with a critical eye. They look around and they ask why. They look at this world through a lens of doubt. Well, this doesn't make sense. Or this could be done a different way, a better way, a new way. So they blaze a new path. They take a different approach. We'll call them mavericks. Now, the mavericks make the sheep very nervous because they challenge the norms. And in doing so, they're challenging what is safe, what is acceptable. They are challenging the clan. Consequently, mavericks are often treated with great scorn and ridicule. But where would we be in this world without mavericks? Because understand, my friends, there is a great upside to doubt. Sir Francis Bacon once said, if a man begins with certainty, he shall end in doubt. But if he begins in doubt, he will end in certainty. And I think what Mr. Bacon was getting at is that you cannot trust your own thinking. Rather, you should consider critical thinking. Do not settle for the sheep team. Be a maverick. Listen to others who might not agree with you. Open yourself up to the possibility that maybe you just don't know. Consider this. Mankind's first science was religion. Today, that's been completely flipped as the most popular religion is science. We live in a world that looks to science to answer our questions. So let's take a look at science for a moment. Did you know that in 1840, which is not that long ago, the best scientific minds concluded that anybody traveling at a speed of 30 miles an hour or, or faster would surely suffocate? I'm serious, they believe that at the time, Traveling at that speed would suck out all the air from your lungs. In 1878, science announced that electric lighting was unworthy of serious attention. In 1901, science proclaimed no possible combination could ever be united into a practical machine by which men can fly. Now, think about that. We think we know what we think we know. Consider Thomas Watson, the, CB, the, CB, the CEO of IBM with International Business Machines. 1943, it was one of the largest corporations in the world. And the CEO, he said, I think that there's a world market for maybe you know, five computers. Today, everybody's got a computer in their hand. And it is hard to overestimate how profoundly Steve Jobs changed this world when he introduced the iPhone in 2007, which, by the way, was the year that I was ordained into the priesthood. Steve Jobs was a maverick. And he said, don't let the noise of other people drown out your own inner voice. Now, I want you to slide that quote into the back burner, let it simmer for a while, because we're going to pull that one out later. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. You stick around. We'll be right back, and we will continue to talk about this gospel here as we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living. If you feel like you're being fed by this ministry, I would ask you to prayerfully consider a partnership with Daily Living and what we're trying to do here. A monthly gift of any amount that you feel comfortable with and I will send you a monthly newsletter and if you provide an email address, a script of the show prior to its broadcast. Just write a check to Daily Living, P.O. Box 339, Nitro, West Virginia, 25143. You can also go on the website at mydailyliving.com to give through PayPal and together, we can shine the light of the good news in a whole lot of dark places. What do you say we get back to the show? Welcome back to Daily Living. Now, just for the break, we were talking all about doubt. We were talking about sheep. We were talking about mavericks. 
sheep who look at this world and say, okay, I can do that. Mavericks who look at the same world and ask why. Mavericks are employing critical thinking. Sheep, not so much. And you know, the thing about sheep, they are so willing to listen to bad thinking. Uh, let me give you just one example, and, and, I, and I'm not making this up, okay? A politician recently made this comment publicly, okay? So this is public record. She said that the heartbeat detected by an ultrasound machine was simply a device designed to take away women's rights. I'm serious. I mean, this could be the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. And trust me, I've heard many dumb things, but this, I mean, suggesting that the ultrasound machine is not really picking up a heartbeat, well, that just takes the cake. But you know what's even dumber? Is that we as sheep listen, and she's most likely gonna get elected. But getting back to the doubt, is it a bad thing? Let's say for a moment, just for discussion's sake, that doubt is bad. If doubt is bad, that would mean that the antithetical to doubt, which is certainty, would be good, right? So, certainty. What does certainty do? Well, first of all, certainty defines expectation. And what does expectation do? Expectation informs thinking, right? So, we all know what we think we know. And this is exactly what happens to John the Baptist. He was certain that the Messiah was coming. And he had a very clear understanding as to what that would look like. A warrior king with a winnowing fork in his hand to bring judgment and justice, who would raise up an army, lead him into battle against Rome and defeat those Romans, restore the temple worship and, and, and bring back the glory days of old and create an everlasting kingdom where he would take his throne. That's what John was waiting on. Didn't work out that way, but you know, sometimes God has other plans. And now John is in prison. Why? Because he had gone after Herod. And why did he do that? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, obviously he had convictions. And those convictions challenged authority. And he spoke truth to power. Now he finds himself in prison. And as he is confined by these four walls, which, you know, he's an outdoors guy, so this has got to be really difficult. He's hearing these reports about Jesus, and what he's hearing does not line up with his own expectations. Now remember, expectations define thinking, so he doubts. That word doubt, coming from the Latin dobiter, it means to be of two minds. So he sends out his people to ask Jesus, are you the one? Or should we look for another? And I, lo I love the answer because he could have said, Jesus, he could have said, yeah, I'm the guy. But no, he doesn't say that. He says, go tell John what you hear, what you see. The blind regain sight. The lame walk, the deaf hear. The dead are raised and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. In other words, check out the evidence, my friend. Go tell John what you've seen and what you heard. Let him make up his own mind. Are you the one? Or should we look for another? You know, actually, that's a pretty good question. And I think it's a question that we should be asking ourselves, especially now during Advent. Is he the one? Or should we look for another? How do we answer that question? What are our expectations? What are our convictions? What are we looking for? I mean, consider the evidence in your own life. When you look over your life, all those times where it could have very easily gone the other way, but it didn't. Do you really think you're that lucky, my friend? The kingdom of God is all around you. But to tap into this kingdom, you got to be a maverick. You got to learn to swim upstream in a culture that denies God because it wants to be its own God. 
And my friends, it's okay to be a sheep if you got the right shepherd. It's okay to wrestle with doubt. You might find yourself today languishing in a dungeon of illness, a prison of a failed marriage, the loss of somebody very close to you, maybe a miscarriage, a thousand different sorrows. Remember the words of Jesus. Pick up your cross and follow me. My friend, are you suffering today? Remember, so did he. And not only that, he's suffering with you right now. So hold on. And don't let the noise of other people drown out your inner voice. Yes, my friend. I told you we were going to get back to that. Don't let the noise of other people drown out your own inner voice. The quiet voice. The inner voice of the Holy Spirit that will light your way. A voice that will guard and guide your life. A voice that will vanquish all doubt. A voice that is whispering to you today, pick up your cross and follow me. As Jesus, the author of your salvation, gently writes the story of your life on the pages of your faith. You know, every day in this country, Somebody does something nice for somebody else. Today, why don't you let that somebody be you? Because the best vitamin for a Christian is B1. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin, swinging the bat of truth. Hope you can come back next week and we'll do it again. Until then, I hope you let God live in your life. And I bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>